now that we know the VCG mechanism it, in quite some detail along with its advantages and disadvantages, this is the right time to uh, look at a generalized version of the VCG mechanism. So the VCG mechanism essentially picks the uh, efficient allocation which is the allocation which maximizes the sum of the values of all the agents. One way of uh, generalizing this VCG allocation is to incorporate some weights and some uh, function which translates the allocations. So we have uh, seen this uh, affine maximizer allocation rule when we uh, gave some examples of allocation rules in some previous module. So what, uh, what is different here is unlike the efficient allocation, now we have uh, an weight for every agent i. So wi represents the weight corresponding to agent i and um, uh, there are different weights these weights need not be always equal and we take the uh, weighted sum of the valuations of all the agents now at a specific allocation and we uh, translate that uh, weighted sum with a function which is a function of the allocation so we are giving so this function is giving different weights or different um, uh, values to different allocations so maybe some of these allocations are more preferred than the other allocations that is being reflected by this uh, function kappa so this uh, the sum together is uh, is essentially an affine sum we have a weighted average weighted sum and then we have a translation uh, factor and all these are evaluated at a specific alt uh, alternative or allocation a and uh, this affine maximizer picks the allocation which maximizes this affine sum and hence the name affine maximizer and we are also going to assume that these uh, weights are uh, non-negative weights of course um, uh, nobody is going to be given a negative weight but uh, all of them cannot be simultaneously zero uh, and kappa again is a function kappa has no restriction uh, on being positive or negative it can take any real number values now when we define this we can uh, easily relate it to the uh, the classical uh, vcg mechanism where we are uh, trying to find the uh, efficient allocation so there are uh, some mechanisms that we already know of and uh, those are special cases of this affine maximizer uh, class of mechanisms how so if we uh, keep this kappa function to be identically equal to zero so that is it is zero for all allocations then um, the, this term actually just uh, disappears so this term is not there anymore and now if we have the weights to be equal to one uh, or um, the weights are identical for all the agents then the outcome that we get is essentially the efficient outcome and this is the uh, allocation that uh, vcg mechanism picks Similarly, we can have a very distinguished uh, uh, agent called the dictator uh, whose weight is exactly equal to 1 and for all other agents the weights are equal to 0. So in that case we are just picking the most favorite allocation of that dictator and uh, not looking at the valuations of any of the other agents. So this is the, uh, the usual dictatorial mechanism, dictatorial uh, social choice function and uh, that both these two uh, cases are special cases of the affine maximizer. So affine maximizer really is a general class, um, uh, a super class of all these mechanisms. What we can observe is that this, uh, because this WIs can now be different for different agents, this mechanism is not anonymous anymore. So in the efficient allocation, it was anonymous because even if we uh, change the identities of these agents, so what that means is the, the uh, if the agents uh, names are permuted, that uh, then those new agents now get the permuted valuations, but the sum of the valuation still remains the same and you are picking the alternative so just by permuting the agents you are not going to change the outcome but what can happen in wis because this uh, wis are um, uh, chosen for each of these agents when we are permuting we are actually giving different weights to the, this different valuations now and uh, because of that the allocation might change and therefore it might not be anonymous anymore so this is one important uh, difference than the than the vcg mechanism so k uh, could be a, a non-constant function of course we have assumed here a constant function and uh, the interpretation is uh, as we said it, it is giving different importance to different allocations so some of the allocations are given higher importance in the uh, in the final uh, social choice outcome 
uh, and some of them are giving lower importances. And as we have already said that uh, affine maximizer is a superclass, at least the allocation part is a superclass of the VCG mechanisms. We'll ask a, a characterization question, so uh, something very similar to the GS theorem or even in the, uh, con in the restricted domains like single peak preferences or the task allocation preferences. Uh, we have seen uh, certain characterization results that if we need these properties, then this is the class of mechanism. Uh, in, the, in the case of uh, single peak preferences, it was the median voter rule. For the task allocation, it was the uniform rule. And we'll see a very similar result in the context of uh, mechanisms with transfers uh, in, in this uh, setup. So, but uh, in order to define that, we'll have to first uh, define one additional property. And this property is known as the independence of non-influential agents. Uh, the purpose of this name will uh, become very evident when we define it. So it says that whenever there exists some agent whose weight is zero, so it has no uh, importance in uh, making the final decision, but there could be a situation where there are ties. So uh, uh, suppose there are this affine uh, maximizer sum uh, is the same for two different alternatives, two different allocations. So in that case, what can happen is that uh, we should not be making the the choice of or break these ties based on the preferences of this agent who, whom we are going to call the non-influential agent because it has no influence um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the deciding that affine maximizes sum because its weight is zero. So if, if we don't do that, so for instance um, for, for that player for which the weight is zero, if the affine maximizes sum uh, the affine maximizer outcome remains consistent. So no matter whatever the, the, uh, the preferences or the type of this uh, non-influential agent is, whether it is theta i or theta i prime, doesn't matter the outcome of the affine maximizer will be the same. So the tie breaking is not uh, based on the, uh, the, the types of this particular uh, non-influential agent. The uh, the problem is if this property was not satisfied, then uh, the affine maximizer uh, mechanism could be manipulated. And here is how it can be manipulated. So for instance, suppose uh, there is a tie kind of a situation and there are two alternatives A and B, uh, allocations A and B, and uh, a, prefer a is more preferred by agent I, which is a non-influential agent, that means its weight is zero, uh, A is more preferred than B. Now in the, uh, in the preference profile where you are actually outputting B there, uh, uh, because agent I, if you, if you break the tie in, in some way, so let's say you are looking at the, uh, the bottom most alternative of, uh, of that player I, then this agent will always be incentivized to misrepresent its uh, preferences. It, it will uh, present itself as if it values A less because in reality uh, that uh, that A will be uh, the outcome that has been chosen and it prefers it more than the current outcome. And uh, so therefore, um, uh, one can easily construct an example uh, if we break the tie uh, by looking at this agent I's uh, uh, preference uh, or the type, then this affine maximizer uh, might not be uh, truthful anymore. And that's a very subtle point, but uh, sometimes um, it is not so so much highlighted, so I uh, thought that I should make it very clear that independence of non-influential agents, if we assume this property, that is, uh, for those players whose uh, weights are zero in the affine maximizer sum, uh, the outcome uh, of the affine maximizer sum should not depend on their uh, their types. So it should be same for all the types of that agent. So that is essentially the this property. And if we uh, assume that property then we can actually show certain uh, good results. So we, we can show that uh, this mechanism, the affine maximizer rule uh, satisfying INA is implementable in dominant strategies. So of course, we have already discussed about this tie breaking rule. If, as long as the tie breaking rule is, is consistent, uh, we'll, we'll have this INA property satisfied. Uh, and then uh, all that we need to show is that is something which is very similar uh, to the proof of uh, Groves a mechanism. So uh, the the property. So what is uh, uh, how we are going to define the payment, right? So 
uh, as before we are going to say that this mechanism uh, in the uh, in the quasi linear domain uh, is implementable in dominant strategies that means there exists some payment which implements it in dominant strategies and uh, this theorem does not say anything about it so we will have to construct it so uh, here is how we can construct that so we can uh, define so this is the the payment uh, under this affine maximizer rule for uh, this agent i when the reported types are theta i and theta minus i and um, the, on the right hand side we have a large expression let us go over them one by one uh, so let us first start with the the innermost uh, expression so this is uh, quite similar to the uh, to the case where we are looking at the agents except agent i the the sum of the valuations of all the agents except agent i at the efficient uh, allocation so here the efficient allocation is being replaced by the affine maximizer outcome uh, affine maximizer allocation and also the sum of the valuations is being replaced by the sum of the uh, the weighted sum of the valuations and as before because uh, uh, this whole term so remember what was uh, what was this term in the case of vcg mechanism so it was just the sum over all these theta j's at that a star which was the efficient allocation and we are summing over all j not equal to i here we are also doing the same thing uh, just that we are uh, putting the corresponding weights and also uh, uh, adding this uh, this function kappa so kappa is something like a translation on the allocation it, it has no relationship with the agents valuations anymore so we can keep it as it is and then we are summing over all the uh, the, uh, the weighted sum of the valuations of all the agents and this whole affine sum is computed at the outcome at the uh, affine maximizer outcome now uh, similar to the gross payment uh, we had this uh, this term hi of theta minus i which is not dependent on agent i's uh, type at all so it can be any arbitrary function and finally we'll have to divide it with respect to one over uh, divided by wi which is the weight uh, associated with this player i so uh, we'll soon see that uh, the reason we have chosen this numbers in such a way that we can prove that this is going to be uh, strategy proof uh, or the uh, dsic and uh, this is same uh, the, the proof technique is actually going to be same as uh, the the gross uh, payment rule and this uh, expression is when uh, the weights are positive if the weight is uh, zero uh, the weight can only be non-negative so if the weight is zero then this payment will also be zero so this is the definition of this uh, the proposed payment that will make this mechanism dsic so uh, now let us uh, look at the case where this wi is, uh, is positive because wi equal to zero uh, uh, situation becomes very simple because the the outcome is no way uh, uh, possible to change uh, in addition uh, to the fact that uh, this uh, there is this ina property uh, so agent i uh, if it has a weight of zero then its payment is zero according to this um, uh, payment rule and it has uh, uh, the affine maximizer outcome will not be dependent on its uh, on its valuation at all so it does not matter whatever it reports and also if there is a tie that tie will also not be resolved uh, with respect to the the type of this agent so uh, together uh, that agent has no role to play in either the decision or the payment so therefore uh, it is uh, trivially truthful in that context so the only thing that can happen is when the weights are positive so if the weight is positive then we can write down the expression for the utility of player i and that is nothing but the uh, the valuation at that uh, uh, affine maximizer outcome and uh, subtract that out uh, so subtract the the payment under this uh, affine maximizer uh, uh, payment that we have just defined here now we can just uh, unravel the the expressions inside and we can reorganize these terms what we will find is that this 1 over wi uh, and then we have this the sum which is nothing but the affine maximizer sum so remember that we were um, so if you reorganize it appropriately you will find that this is the this is the allocation part uh, in both these parts and uh, this uh, the the whole expression within this blue parenthesis is nothing but that affine sum 
and by definition this affine maximizer is maximizing this term so therefore it is going to be greater than or equal to any other b so we could have written the same expression with any other b replacing these two these two places here and in particular what we are going to pick is when agent i is misreporting so theta i and the other agents are reporting whatever they are reporting apply affine maximizer on that that will give you some outcome and this um, inequality will get satisfied even for that so if you write that down and then uh, notice that this hi theta minus i is completely independent of player i's uh, type report uh, so it does not really matter so it remains the same in both these sides of the inequality now we can uh, reorganize this term and write it uh, as the, the valuation when agent i is misreporting to theta i prime and also the payment is calculated when it is misreporting. So what we have actually uh, shown here is that when agent i is reporting its type truthfully, it is weakly uh, better off than uh, reporting uh, its type uh, untruthfully. So therefore, this is, um, uh, this is a DSIC mechanism. And we have all already uh, considered the case of uh, weight to be equal to zero because it has no role to play in the decision making. So therefore, it is uh, this is trivially truthful when the weight is actually equal to zero. Now, what we are going to do is similar to this uh, gibbard weight theorem. So if you remember, gibbard weight theorem has said that we have two properties. Uh, you have only the dictatorial uh, class of mechanisms, which is... Uh, 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 which is truthful so of course truthfulness is something uh, common in all these cases now in in this case we are going to consider uh, the a very similar setting where the types are unrestricted in some sense we will say that uh, if there is no additional restriction uh, being put apart from the fact that it is picking those allocations from this allocation space and can take any uh, real value so if that is true in this unrestricted space of valuations in the quasi-linear domain, we can actually um, uh, do an analog of, uh, of a GS theorem. We can characterize the class of DSIC mechanisms in this quasi-linear domain and this result was given by Roberts in 1979. So if we have this set of allocations which has at least three elements in it, and if the type space of uh, uh, every agent is unrestricted, then every onto and dominant strategy incentive compatible allocation must be an affine maximizer. So it actually says uh, the whole space uh, together, uh, the, whenever we have uh, onto-ness and this dominant strategy incentive compatibility condition, the unique class that we can, uh, uh, we can have is the class of affine maximizers. So uh, why is it uh, similar to GS theorem? Because in GS theorem also we, we have assumed that you can, the agents can have any preference ordering. So unrestricted preference ordering over so all these alternatives and then only we have a dictatorial result. And similarly in this, in this case also we are assuming that the, uh, the types can be any arbitrary types. The valuation can take any values. So if we restrict our valuation class let's say uh, to submodular valuations when we are uh, talking about uh, object allocations or additive valuations which is just uh, if you have a bundle of objects the valuation of uh, that uh, bundle is nothing but the sum of the individual items in those kind of situations robert's theorem does not hold uh, clearly there are more mechanisms which are truthful than only the affine maximizer rule and that is essentially the, the domain restriction under this uh, setup of uh, uh, quasi-linear preferences. So if you are uh, interested in the, in the proof, we will not do the proof in this uh, class because uh, this, the proofs are really long. Uh, if you are interested, you can take a look at this uh, very short and simple paper called Two Simplified Proofs of Robert's Theorem by Lavi, Mualem and Nissan. Uh, this, is, this has uh, two different uh, simple proofs of, uh, of the uh, Roberts theorem.